Are you guilty of any of these? Here's 10 of the most common drum programming mistakes. And first up, what I like to call octopus drums. What do I mean by that? Well, if I was an octopus, I'd have my kick and my hat pedals. Then I've got my hi-hats here, and I've got my toms as well, and I've got my ride cymbal and anything else that I've got going on. And I can play all of it at once because I'm an octopus. But guess what? Your drummer isn't. And if you program drums like an octopus, it's just going to sound super unnatural. So think about it when you're programming your drums. If you're doing a tom roll, then you can't keep your hi-hats and your ride cymbal all going at the same time. It's going to sound super unnatural. A great way around this is to get yourself a set of sticks and actually play air drums along with the drums that you have programmed to check that it all makes sense. Number two is boring hi-hats. Yes, you could just perform a hi-hat once on your MIDI controller and copy and paste it. What you're gonna get, however, is tss, 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 all the way through your song and no drummer plays like that. You're gonna end up with a drum sound that just is really, really lacking in feel. At the very least, to make your drums sound more natural, realistic, and to give your song some feel, dynamic, and energy, you wanna think about opening up your hi-hats as you get towards areas in the song like a chorus. Number three is not utilizing your MIDI packs. If you're always programming your drums yourself, and not taking advantage of some of the supplied MIDI packs, then you could be missing a big trick. I know Addictive Drums, which is the program that I use, has some awesome MIDI packs in it performed by real drummers. And blending some of these in with your already programmed drums can really make your song come to life. Not only that, some of these MIDI packs and patterns sound fantastic, and they can be brilliant for songwriting and for giving you ideas. If you're looking to get better results when you're mixing drums, I've got an awesome free gift for you, a Drum Bus EQ cheat sheet. You can grab it right now below this video whilst you're there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Number four is not treating your program drums like a real drum kit when it comes down to mixing. Most drum programs will bust down onto a stereo bus and you'll have to delve a bit deeper to split those tracks up. But if you're not taking that extra bit of time to separate out the kick and the snare, maybe the room and the overheads, then you're missing a big trick when it comes to mixing your drums. Number five is over quantizing. So many of us are guilty of this because it's so easy just to quantize everything and get it all in perfect time, but you just end up with robot drums. A lot of DAWs have a humanized option, so make sure you use it. And if you're feeling a bit more patient, you can delve in and edit that MIDI by hand. Number six is over cutting and pasting. This is another easy trap to fall into because let's face it, drum programming isn't exactly the most exciting thing to do in your home studio. So once you've done a verse and a chorus, it's really tempting just a verse, verse, chorus, chorus, verse, chorus. But you could be missing a trick if you're just simply cut and pasting uh, the same verse and chorus patterns. Uh, it's gonna lead to a lack of dynamics in your track. It's gonna make your song sound quite predictable and certainly quite unnatural. So do try to go the extra distance and take the time to program in different verses and choruses. This is gonna make your song flow, give a sense of progression and keep things sounding a lot more natural. Next up is forgetting to use, ignoring to use, or just not using at all real percussion. If you're programming drums inside your DAW and it's artificial drums, but you wanna bring things to life, percussion, real percussion, is a great way to not only do that, but also bring in a sense of real energy. Simple things like shakers and tambourines can make a massive difference to the dynamics of your tracks, and they're so inexpensive. Next up is forgetting fills. If you're moving from a verse into a chorus, and you're not putting a fill in between, you're missing a huge trick. Bringing a drum fill in is gonna accelerate your verse into the chorus. It's gonna tell the listener something's coming. It's gonna bring a sense of excitement into your chorus. Don't forget to use fills. Next up is using crash cymbals on their own. If you're drum programming and you're using a crash cymbal on its own, stop doing it. It doesn't sound good. No drummers will just use a crash cymbal on its own because it doesn't sound good. That's why they're always accompanying it with another drum, be that a kick, a snare, or a tom. And finally, if you're using poor quality samples, if your drum program does not sound very realistic, you must not rely on your mixing to solve that problem. If you're starting out with poor samples, if you're starting out with a poor drum sound, no amount of mixing is going to fix that. So you can save yourself a massive headache and use top quality samples or a really good realistic drum program if that's the drum sound that you are going for.
I hope you enjoyed that video today. What are your drum programming fails? I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments box below. Whilst you're down there, don't forget to grab that free drum EQ cheat sheet and to like and subscribe here on Real Home Studio on YouTube. And if you enjoyed this video, you're definitely going to want to check this one out.